for my own safety, I'm trapped inside the store. Someone or something knocked on the glass. Someone creeping around outside. And I honestly just shrugged it off. Kind of like pushing people around just a little bit. <laughs> I feel like someone's watching me. I mean, I'm turning around looking, there's nothing there. It just gave me goosebumps. All these weird things were happening to me, but the worst was yet to come. Want to imagine it, but it did happen. Even to this day, I get chills. have been altered to protect confidentiality. My name is Lee, and I work the night shift. <laughs> On a dark country road, 33-year-old Lee makes his way to his job at a secluded overnight campground. My job was overnight security at a campground. I would drive myself to the park and get there about 10 p.m. every night. Drive back home in the morning, 6 a.m. Lee works the graveyard shift with one other campground employee, his foreman, Tim. Hey, Tim. Hey, buddy. Just gonna go start my rounds. All right, I'll see you in 45. Lee is responsible for making sure everyone is safe and following the campsite rules. He's there to help and to lay down the law if necessary. The three things I really liked about the job was the peace and quiet, first of all. The fact that I pretty much was my own boss. And, and I'll have to admit, I kind of kind of like pushing people around just a little bit. <laughs> Lee's duties include making sure that all the day visitors have left and the parking lot is empty. This particular night, I'm doing my rounds. I go down to the wetlands, and I see a car parked there. What do we have here? Hey, Tim, buddy. Looks like we got a car parked in the day lot. I'm gonna go see what's up over there. Uh, copy that. I spotted some guy posing for folks down here the other night. It, it, it might be them. Over. Copy that. got out of the truck to go tell these people that they had to get out, they had to leave. They're not allowed in the case wetlands area after a certain time. Lee can never be sure of what he's about to run into. Partiers, poachers, or an amorous couple. I only carried a flashlight, but it's a big, long, black, heavy one. It hurts when I hit you. All right, lovebirds, park's closed. Get out of here before I write you up. That was really freaky. I, I can't explain what I saw. <laughs> As I'm watching them leave, I hear a sobbing, and I mean a deep sobbing. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Not a little whimper, not a little cry, deep sobbing right next to me. Hello? Are you okay? I mean, I'm turning around looking, there's nothing there. It just gave me goosebumps. Is everything okay, Lee? Yeah, everything's fine. Uh, I'm finished my rounds, uh, over and out. I 
I didn't know what was going on. I heard that, and I'm like, okay, I gotta get out of here. This, I, I gotta go, so I got in the truck and I left. The rest of Lee's shift passes without incident. But while on patrol the following night, he makes a surprising discovery. and getting a little freaky because I didn't see anything. <laughs> My head started to hurt and I started feeling just really like a heavy pressure on me. <sighs> it was liquid, it was liquid and, and, and a little chunky. It looked like it could have been bloodstained. I dropped my flashlight. And it was gone. Again, I'm starting to feel like what's going on. see in a distance a light. So I say, okay, what's going on here? There's no car here, so, you know, what do we got going on back here? Hey, Tim. Seeing something over here at the parking lot, a light. Not sure what it is. About to go check it out. Over. Copy that, Lee. Over. Lee makes his way into the dark forest that surrounds the wetlands. <sighs> I think there's somebody there. recognized them from the campground. They were they're local troublemakers. Okay. I think we lost them. Howdy, boys. These guys were in there frog-gigging illegally. Dump that out. All of it. Come on, man. That's hours of work. I don't care. All of it. I made them dump their bucket. Hurry up. I want to get the hell out of here. I know they were nervous because I was there busting them, but there was something else wrong with them. I don't know. So they were kind of freaked out. What, is something scaring you boys? <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> and he looked a little unnerved. He looked a little shook up. Yeah. You know what's making that sound? No. All right, you two, get out of here. Leave your headlamps on, though, so I can follow you out. I watched him go. Tim, it's all good out here, just a couple of froggers. Tim, do you copy? Tim. saw then, it creeps me out talking about, even to this day, I get chills. Overnight security guard Lee starts to believe the remote campsite where he works is haunted. After chasing away some poachers, he comes face to face with a terrifying apparition. Oh! 
I'm not a person that gets scared easily. <laughs> but that just scared me to death, so I felt like I'm getting out of here. Lee runs back to the parking lot, but whatever he saw in the forest isn't ready to let him go just yet. Began to get a headache. And I heard the sob again. It was a deep, deep, and disturbing like sobbing. There was someone walked in front of my headlights. You could see the full body walk in front of my headlights. I saw it with my own eyes. This figure clear as day in front of my headlights. <laughs> I saw it, and I froze. <laughs> what is this I'm seeing on the ground? <laughs> had, uh, had her head blown off with a shotgun. I still get goosebumps. I get, you know, I get, I have them right now. I've got a chill right on my spine just talking about it. And it's been how many years, you know? I turned around and ran back to my truck. I knew when I drove out of there that she was watching me. <laughs> Tim, man, we got something we gotta talk about. And I asked him, well, what's going on at, the, at that place down there? What is it? There's something going on. Down there. I haven't said anything to you about it, but it's there's something there. And he just kind of stood there for a moment, and he said, oh, you mean the parking lot? You might want to sit down for this. <laughs> no, thanks. I'll stand. Back when I was doing your job, there was a, a woman, and she got murdered. She, uh, she had her head blown off with a shotgun. And what evidently it was, was the blast had blew her head out the window, and that's what was on the ground there. When Lee goes into this parking lot, he sees this car which disappears. He hears the sounds of crying. Uh, the stain which disappears, and also these headaches. This might be indicative of a spirit um, projecting these things for Lee to see. I think that the spirit might recognize Lee as an authority figure, and it's simply trying to get help. It's trying to escape this trauma that it keeps living through. You think she was calling for help? I think so. I think that's what it's all about. I think that's why I think she's still there. I believe that. Why else? You know, I, I have no explanation for it. Despite what he has learned, Lee doesn't quit his job. I never did think about quitting. In the beginning, I was on edge the whole time. But the longer I went there, you know, it, it just got commonplace. It was just, you know, well, here we are again. Evidently, she needs help, so I've tried to make contact. Hello? You here? Yeah, well, you know, just say hello and leave. You let me know if there's anything I can do for you, okay? I know she was standing there. I know she was watching every time. I guarantee you she's still there to this day. I think she needs someone to release her. I mean, that's you know, something, somehow. 
some acknowledgement, something, I don't know. Maybe this will help, maybe her story being told, maybe that will help her get out of there, get out of the situation, whatever it is, I don't know. <laughs> I'm coming back. My name is Al Campbell and I work the night shift. I work as a night clerk in a local gas station. I work the day shift normally, but I wanted to save more money for my wedding and save money for my son. So I asked if I could start working the night shift to get more hours. Al loves his job, but not the area it's located in. There's a graveyard about two blocks away from the gas station, so that freaked me out a little bit. And that's not all. This gas station is located in a very dangerous part of my town. I have no choice but to lock the doors at night. When a customer wants to come inside, they ring a buzzer, and I um, use a button to unlock it. For my own safety, I'm trapped inside the store. There are other security measures in place. We have three security cameras that look on our registers, and they also look out at the aisles. My first night working the night shift, it was pretty normal at first. My typical duties include cleaning the coffee pots, the pop area, fountain area. His first shift starts out smoothly. I was done with everything early. I decided to crack open my book. And no sooner that I cracked it open, started hearing the buzzer to the front door go off. I didn't see anybody at the door at all. But the buzzer keeps going off. At first, I thought maybe I was hearing things, or maybe it was just my mind playing tricks on me. And then... Someone or something knocked on the glass. I just looked back and forth to try to see anything, and I saw nothing. He's nervous, with good reason. <laughs> Not long after, I started hearing another noise, but this time it was coming from inside the store. It was like a scratching kind of nails on a chalkboard noise. He follows the sound. As I'm walking towards the restroom, I can hear the screeching sound getting louder and louder. I was a little freaked out, thinking there's something in here and I have to get it out. Al finds the courage to look inside. <sighs> My first reaction was shock. I didn't see anything. As soon as I realized nothing was there, I just kind of stepped out of the bathroom and stared at the door. Like, what did I just witness kind of thing? Am I really going crazy? That's gotta be stressful to think maybe you're going crazy, right? It's very stressful. All these weird things were happening to me, but the worst was yet to come.
as I was walking back to the front of the store, out of the corner of my eye, I thought I saw someone or something move, dart really fast. Hello? Who's in here? If you don't come out, I'm going to call the police. Hello? Where are you? Al doesn't call the police, but decides to call his boss. It, it's Al. I'm sorry to bother you so late. My boss just brushed it off, really, like, someone was messing with me. It's no big deal. After she told me that, I just felt like I was going crazy. Why didn't you just quit or go back to days only? I had a lot of financial obligations. The next shift I had for the overnight, everything was fine. Everything was normal. But just a few hours into a shift, that changes. The beer cooler lights were going on and off, on and off. This makes Al uneasy. There's no way it could be flickering like that. Those are motion-activated lights. My anxiety skyrocketed. I started to hear the buzzer go off and go off and go off, and it wouldn't stop. I heard noises on the glass doors just scratching noises and like banging noises and knocking noises. There's nothing there, there's no one there, but the sounds are still going. I feel like someone's staring at me, someone's watching me. What happens next haunts him to this day. My eyes got big and I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was absolutely terrifying. While working nights as a clerk at a gas station, Al experiences unexplained sights and sounds. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. He can't shake the feeling he's being watched. Then one night, his fears come true. It was absolutely terrifying. I saw a shadowy-like person staring at me. At that point, I freaked out a little bit. What's going on? There's something in here. Calm down. It's probably teenagers trying to prank you. Can we please just look at the security footage? <sighs> My boss played it down like it was nothing, but I knew it wasn't. As we were reviewing the footage, I noticed something strange. I saw a shadowy like person go back and forth really fast, like they were pacing back and forth. The thing on the video was the same thing that was messing with me. The way it was walking was very aggressive. There's proof on the tapes that this is happening. It's then that Al's boss reveals a tortured history. She said the gas station that I work at is the site of the Trail of Death. In the early 19th century, the indigenous peoples of the Lake Michigan region are forced from their lands at gunpoint. An expulsion marked by starvation, disease, and suffering. The path they walked became the trail of death. 
I think Al is just in this vortex of, of this very great energy, this almost like a, a very highly charged ley line where you have this, this uh, very awful trail of death where uh, all these injustices were done to this people. Any place which has uh, blood in the soil is ripe for paranormal experiences. The shadow figure or shadow person that Al sees, uh, which appears very sinister, could actually be very sinister. Anything which needs to disguise itself, to shroud itself in a cloak of darkness, uh, is something that is potentially very dangerous and malicious. I, I know it was something paranormal. Why did you go back to work? My main reason is because I need to make money for my son and for my fiance and to make sure that we have a happy, healthy home. Al stays on the job, but is anxious. I always feel like something is watching me or someone is watching me. The smallest tasks have Al on edge. One night I had to replenish the fountain cups and in order to do that I had to go in the back storage room. In order to reach the cups, I have to climb a ladder. I make my way up the ladder, and I get the box of cups, and I throw them down. I started making my way down the ladder, and I started feeling a small shake and the shaking got more intense. Ah! I was scared I was gonna fall. Whoa! Ah! Something just threw me off a ladder. Oh. I'm in a lot of pain, and I was just laying there shocked, like, what just happened? And then I look up and the ladder started crashing towards me. Ah! The ladder smashed on the ground and made a really loud, deafening noise. And I just sat there with my knees to my chest, confused, scared, and I cried. And I don't cry very often, but at that moment, I was so scared, I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> Al falling off this ladder and almost being struck by it, I believe was a very clear message uh, from spirit that it intended to harm Al. I think this spirit who is interacting with Al uh, could be very destructive and dangerous because it's kind of preying on his fears. It's manipulating on the fears there. I just wanted to go home. I got to leave early because I was traumatized. Why did this incident scare you so much? Because I could have died. Despite everything he's been through, Al doesn't quit. I have a lot of anxiety to go back to work because I don't know if something really bad is going to happen to me if I'm at work and I'm by myself. I don't know how to protect myself against someone or something I can't see. I just go to work and I hope for the best. My name is Renee and I work the night shift. The place that I work is a pay lake, a place where you go and you pay to fish. You can catch fish day or night and camp overnight. And I was responsible for watching over the staff, including the night shift. I started taking care of lakes when I was a teenager. I became somewhat of an expert, and that is one of the reasons why my boss hired me. Hello? I just had a guy wandering around being that was you. 
Renee receives a complaint okay. about an intruder. Yes, sir. Hey, Renee, I got the bait. Renee's co-worker and cousin Louise has heard similar complaints. Okay. Folks were telling us they saw the man walking around the campgrounds. I'll go take care of it. Can you watch the front desk for me? Okay, sure thing. Thanks. Because of those uh, potential security threat, I walked out there to look for him. Nobody wants to walk the campgrounds at night. Like many campsites, there are rumors that this one is haunted. I didn't want to believe it. I honestly just shrugged it off. Hello? Finding nothing, Renee returns to the bait shack. There was nobody there. Every night, folks were coming in and telling us they saw the man. This has the cousins on edge. We're both there just waiting to hear something, and suddenly... Hello? What happened? It's broken. It's everywhere. Okay. Come now, please. We'll take care of it. Thank you. One of the toilets is broken. I'm gonna go check it out. It's just a sigh of relief. I walk into the restrooms, and I see the busted toilet. And I go over there, I turn off the water. I tape up the door. Just getting it ready to get shut down. I start hearing footsteps. And I see a shadow coming around the corner. Renee goes after it. Hello? It was really spooky. Someone there? Gave you that creepy vibe. That someone's watching you. Or something's about to jump out in front of you. Whoever it is, whatever it is, is gone. That's when I walk over to the bait shack, thinking about what just happened. But there's no time to dwell on it. Luis tells Renee they have another problem on their hands. What's going on? I don't know. Elijah just started going crazy, man. He sounded pretty scared. He said everything was going on and off. OK. You watch the gate, I'll watch the shack. OK. <sighs> My first idea is that I need to go check the power box and see if that's the problem, and I go and I check it. I threw all the power off. Hello? I notice a figure in front of me. Naturally, I thought it was a guest. There is no one there. I just checked the power, and there's nothing wrong with it. The lights kept on flickering in a way that it would just scare you.
The lights went off. It was intense. That's when you start freaking out. When you try and find all the answers as to why it could be, and then you can't find anything. It's just it's scary. His fear soon turns to terror. Who's there? Luis? It's not his cousin at the door. I saw my boss standing there. No, it can't be you. You're, you're dead. At a remote fishing resort, night manager Rene pursues an elusive trespasser. But once he no. realizes who it is, it can't be you. It shakes him to his core. You're, you're dead. I saw my boss standing there. My boss had passed away many years ago. The day that my boss passed away, it was a very, very sad day for everyone who knew and respected him. The boss was tough, but Rene seemed to live up to his expectations. My boss was a retired Marine. I had just came out of the military myself, so taking orders from him was very easy. I always had a very strong work ethic, and he liked that. He liked that he could not have to worry about anything. He knew that I could take care of it. But seeing his boss now in death terrifies Rene. A shiver just went down my back, and I did not know what to do. No! And then he disappeared. I think anyone would be terrified if they were faced with you know, a full body apparition of somebody that they knew had passed. Um, so I think that's why Renee had that initial reaction of fear. I would say that this is an intelligent haunting because the boss was directly interacting. I saw the old boss. Your mind must be playing tricks, man. I saw what I saw. I know what had just happened. I didn't want to imagine it, but it did happen. That's impossible. Hey guys, I just saw something. Someone creeping around outside. The guy was wearing a cowboy hat. Someone comes up to us and tells us that they've seen this man lurking around the campgrounds. All we could think about is we know who they're talking about, and we don't want to tell them. It's OK, sir. We'll take care of it. But it's our responsibility to go out there and check. I did go out and look for him. And there was this anxiety that I was going to find him. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm getting kind of a... <sighs> it's the... <sighs> I did feel that there was somebody behind me. He turns to check. <sighs> I had this sense of uneasiness of uh, uncertainty, fear. <sighs> Suddenly, he's staring right at me. And I didn't know what to do. He panics. I was so freaked out. I just wanted to run out of there. <sighs> the 
head shock. I mean, I could still feel like I'm seeing it today, like I'm replaying it right now in my head over and over again. What is it? What do you want from me? Renee never gets an answer. It disappeared after it made contact. It seemed like he just wanted to say goodbye. To me, that feels like a sign of closure. Renee's brush with the paranormal has left a permanent mark on him. After these events, I never wanted to work night shift again. People tell me that they don't believe in ghosts. I, I always tell them, well, it's, it's up to you to believe in them or not, but they're there. There's always something there. Remember, the old man is out there doing his rounds, so make sure you don't bump into him. <laughs>